hello everybody again. I am just going to assume I am streaming live. I hope that I am. I tell you there's been some interference. I uh, was on uh, early and some of you were on with me. Thank you. Uh, what I realized I had done, I had repeated the same mistake from last time. There are all type of settings I have to get in order before I go live and I had not totally erased the previous mistake I had done last time. But anyway, so that's why we're going up tonight without any of the opening of the music or anything. I just want to release this word that the Lord put on my heart. And we're going to do with deal with the parable that Jesus taught concerning the old wine skins. Now the Bible uh, now, uh, when you read it because of the translations and changes even in the new even in the King James version it has the word bottles but the original translation used the word skins I'm going to show you first this picture of what we'll be dealing with on the left I know you haven't seen that before but that's actually uh, the skin of a goat in its fullness uh, that contains wine and to the right we're more familiar with this wine skin that uh, wine was carried in as well as water. And I want to uh, develop uh, that teaching tonight. I was sharing uh, earlier how the Holy Spirit just dropped this particular parable in my heart today because I became so grieved. You see, the Holy Ghost lives inside of each one of us. And one of the things that the dove does, he moans and he groans, things that cannot be uttered. And I was watching a particular Christian broadcast and just a grieving with what I saw that was being uh, presented uh, on the stage. And uh, I remember having this uh, extreme grieving uh, two other times uh, concerning a church setting. I had gone to a church, this was some years ago, and it was Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Day, and I came in a state of contrite and brokenness before the Lord, just thanking God for all he had done, the price that he had paid, shedding all of his blood on Calvary's tree, that we could have the gift of life. And as I approached uh, the, the, the church foyer, I was met that Easter Sunday morning by a human bunny rabbit. Oh my God, I was so grieved because throughout the service, the bunny rabbit was exalted. When we walked down the children's corridor, the bunny rabbit was exalted. And I kept looking for a lamb. I'm a person of, of grace and mercy that the Lord has bestowed upon me and in me. And I was like, okay, during the service, they're going to say something at least about the lamb. Out of five TV screens up on, on that altar, the lamb, a picture of the lamb was never shown but the human Easter bunny was called up on the stage to give a talk and oh my God God took me back this morning when I was grieved again he took me back to that situation fast forward after the bunny rabbit incident I go to another church on an Easter Sunday morning same state of mind thanking God for what he done thanking him for the blood that he shed for me thanking him for bringing me out of darkness into his marvelous light. light. Well, that morning I was met outside at the front door by a child uh, passing out little flyers. And I'm thinking the little flyer is going to have something about resurrection day. He is risen. Something of that nature. No. They were inviting me to a hip hop presentation. Nothing about the Lord and the Lord getting up on that day, the Lord paying the price. And again, the holy dove on the inside was so grieved. And so it was today. And what was uh, different about today out of the other grievance, I would just get before the Lord and, uh, and just allow the Lord to bring healing and, and, and the dove to meet the dove to moan and groan through me as I made intercession for the body of Christ. You know, we can present for programs and the programs do not point to the Lord the sacrifice and bring forth the glory of God and so it was today at a particular part of this program so I want to show you the scripture that the Lord dropped automatically in my heart today a teaching that Jesus did Luke 5 starting with verse 36 and he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, 
and the peace that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. I know you see what that's saying. Put in an old piece of garment. When I looked it up, it was a piece that was just tattered and torn and worn and had seen better days and trying to sew that piece to a new piece said the two do not have an agreement and a rent will come. And you already know where Jesus was going with this teaching. Let's go to the next verse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Now the original King James said wine skins. And really this translation using the word bottles is doing it an injustice because it will not bring forth the depth of the teaching of what Jesus was sharing on that day. But we're going to deal with that in just a moment. So again, uh, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles else the new wine will burst the bottles, should have been wineskins, and be spilled, and the bottles, or wineskins, look at this, shall perish. Then we go to verse 38, for new wine must be put in new bottles, and both are preserved. Both are preserved. Now, I'm going to take you to the meaning of the word new. It mentioned the word new wine, and it mentioned the word new bottles. And when you look in the Greek concerning what these words means, they both carry a different meaning. Let me show it to you. I made a graphic of it. Well, this is the meaning. I'll just go with this, and maybe I won't have to go to the other graphic. This is from the Dake Study Bible. He'd already nailed it. I love it. He brings out uh, the first word in. In the Greek is the word uh, kainos, and it means renewed. That's referring to that wine skin. It's a renewed wine skin. We're going to deal with that in a moment. And then the wine itself, the word naos in the Greek, it means new in existence. But listen to this statement that he made uh, in the Dake Study Bible as he had studied it out. All wine, all wine skins to hold wine must be, I'm having a hard time, must be soaked in water and often, uh, I'm just going to tell you, you all know I deal some with, with my eyes at time. They're really tired tonight. I've already done this. But in this, you read it as I preach it, amen. He tells about the old wine skin and it has to be soaked in water. But not only that, it has to be rubbed with oil and butter. Do you see that word butter? And it says to prevent leaking and evaporation. And then it goes on to say men only put newly made wine in renewed wine skins and both are preserved. And I'm just going to preach it. I made that a little too big uh, for my vision, but I'm just going to tell what that means right there. The word kainos and the word naos. It has to do again with the new wine skin that that scripture talks about. It's not a brand new wine skin. It's a wine skin that has been renewed. Again, that wine skin would have to go through water and also oil being rubbed on to make it, to prepare it to hold the new wine. Now we take that in the realm of the spirit concerning us. We are the old wine skin and we have to go through a preparation application in order to hold the new wine, the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. But if you try to put the two together with the old wine skin, the old man, the old carnal man, and you're trying to add the new wine to that old carnal man, the Bible teaches us in that scripture that it's going to cause a tear or a burst is going to leak out and both will perish. This is Jesus' teaching and he did it in a parable but it has a spiritual application for us. In other words, the old man has to die. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So today when I was so grieved because I was watching a presentation go forward and when you looked 
uh, at the one doing the presentation, you know, it, it, if you didn't know it was a church, if they weren't saying, gee, you would have thought you were at a Kiss Rock concert or, or something similar. Maybe not as severe as Kiss, but at least at a worldly rock concert. And I'm looking at the servants in the house of the Lord. You know, things that some of you have thought, but maybe you can't say it, but I'm going to say it because I had a man of God call me right before the teaching I did a while ago and confirm when when God puts a word in the watchman's mouth, that watchman has to deliver that word or the blood would be upon his hand. When we walk in our churches and they're looking like we're in a rock concert and there is no difference in the servants of God on the stage presenting the new wine, it, 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 it causes a tear. It causes a rift in the spirit. It causes a non-agreement. And you know, this is why that, that old wine skin had to go through a preparation before the new wine was poured in. Again, water had to be applied. It had to be soaked in water. That's symbolic of the washing of the word. We have to be soaked and washed in the word of God. And then the oil had to be rubbed on that wine skin. That's symbolic of the Holy Ghost. And that was before the wine was poured in. But as as I look sadly in a lot in leadership, we're put we're putting people for simply because of their natural gifting. Everybody has some type of natural gift, but if that gift hasn't been submitted to the Holy Ghost, where He can pour in the anointing upon that gift and get that old wine skin ready to go forth before the people, but then it can cause a rift in the service. As I said in my previous teaching, we're dealing with in our nation and our world a coronavirus where we can release a spiritual coronavirus in the house of God because when we present these people that have not died out to the works of the flesh, that have not let go of the residue of the flesh, the old wine skin, and they come forth trying to present both at the same time, it releases a disagreement in the realm of the spirit. And not only that, what type of example are we setting before those other young ministers that are going to come forward and serve perhaps in the same positions that they're serving in? I'm reminded right now of Queen Esther in the uh, Old Testament. You remember the story of Esther? Before she became queen, she went through a 12-month preparation. And when you uh, read that and study that out, she had to apply the Bible. Bible talks about things rubbed on and things rubbed in. The things that were rubbed in were things to purify her, her flesh, to remove blemishes. See, the Bible talks about spotted things. But we have to get before the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, remove the leprosy, remove the spirit of leprosy, remove the spirit of the leopard. Spirit of the leopard dealing with a leopard is an, is an animal that moves very swiftly. And sometimes you see, even in the pulpit, you'll see the spirit of the seductress going forth in the pulpit. You'll see the spirit of the seducer going forth, even in the pulpit, with the word of God in their mouth. And this is why Queen Esther, the Bible Bible said the things were applied six months of things being rubbed in the purifying we have to allow the word of God to come in be rubbed in purify cleanse out the hidden sins cleanse out the little secret thing that we're hiding inside because again the new wine will not rest well in the old wine skin that has not been renewed again that word we had the word naos and the word kinos and the kinos meaning renewed as I was studying on that old wine skin, sometimes they would have to open that wine skin up and they would have to scrape the residue that, that was stored up in that old wine skin. That's what the Holy Ghost has to do for us. He has to go in and scrape out the old things, all things where we have attachments and bondages to. But what happens often, and I'm dealing with leadership, different leadership in the house of Lord, of the Lord. We're going for with all of that junk still on the inside. And according to the parable that Jesus taught, there will be a bursting because the two cannot walk together. There is no agreement. And the Bible said they both 
will perish. We have seen that over the years as, as we have watched ministry. I'm reminded of a man of God, beautiful work uh, down in the Atlanta, Georgia area. I believe that's where his ministry was. Not that that matters because this scenario can be repeated all over and how the devil is laughing at the house of God. And he was doing beautiful work. He and his beautiful wife, young kids, beautiful family, great things, mega church. But you know what? He hadn't dealt with the hidden residue in the old wine skin. So he wound up ministering some overseas and wound up having an affair with the woman. One day the woman took a picture of them together and then she posted it. And of course you know what happened. It boomeranged back here to America. And even though his wife stood with him and they had marriage counsel and all of that, he now had allowed passage to the enemy. See, once you open the door and let the enemy in, you can become bound. Even though you want to shake him loose, you have given him a legal right to hook on to you. And that's what happened in his situation. So the next thing, because of all the trouble that was in his life, he went back to drugs. The Bible talks about the dog going back to his vomit. I'm not calling him a dog. I'm talking about the scripture that was used. God would often use parables to teach us. And once that enemy gets a hook in you, he will take you right back to your past. Again, the parable that Jesus gave this morning concerning the new wine being poured in old wine skin. We're going to have to be so careful, even as leadership, what we put forth before God's sheep and presenting it uh, as a, a vessel that's going to pour out uh, anointing and ministry to God's sheep. When we look at the pattern in the Old Testament, I know you're saying, Sister Pat, we're not in the Old Testament. It has been fulfilled. Yes, it has. But there are spiritual principles and applications we can learn. The Bible said in the New Testament, the things that were written of old were written for our learning. So when we go back to the priesthood in the Old Testament, one of the things that the Lord uh, required of them, did you not know, even down to their undergarments. They had to wear a particular undergarment, the Lord said, before you approach my altar. He said, because if you approach my altar without this particular undergarment that he had designed to go with the priestly robe that they wore, he said, you will die. Now, how does that apply to us? We have to allow the spirit of the Lord to get our spirit, our soul, and our body in order, pleasing to the Lord. If not, there would cause a tear. And all of a sudden, the new wine will spill out. And again, Jesus said, both will perish. Now, let me show you another scripture uh, concerning uh, what he said. Then says the Lord, oh, this one is awesome. This is in Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path, P-A-T-H-S, where is the good way? He's saying in the old path is the good way. There are some things that we have laid down because we are so modern and we are so Hollywood minded in our church services that we have gotten rid of some old paths of holiness and standards and structure that will keep us. And it goes on to say, and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. Isn't it amazing so many can go to church and to some of our sometimes Hollywood services and there's still no rest and no peace in their soul. They go home and commit suicide often after losing the after leaving the church. But when we follow the old paths and the old standards and we're pleasing to God, there will be an anointing in the house to deliver glory to God. It says, but they said, we will not walk therein. Then we go on to another scripture here in 2 Peter 2 and 22 in the New Testament. It says, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Oh my God. 
Oh my God, there is a holy God that we have to serve and we have to seek him for the pattern. I'm reminded of when he talk, spoke to Moses and he gave Moses, the Bible said, the pattern on how to build that tabernacle. He gave Moses a pattern on how the religious ceremonies were to be conducted. There is a pattern for the church and it does not include anything and everything. Like we look at Hollywood where we, we got to look just like them. We got to have the pink hair and the purple hair and the yellow hair and the earrings hanging out the nose and out the eyebrows and out of everything else and any type of clothes on up there depicting the carnality, the world, the old wine skin. No. When we are in Christ, again, we are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Holy Spirit was so grieved this morning because he dropped that grieving and that moaning on me. And I began to intercede and cry out for the body of Christ and for leadership in the body of Christ. When he looks down at our services, is he pleased? Oh, my God. I want to show you another uh, scripture. Let me see. I believe it's number four. I'm doing this again from, like I said, I shared it a few minutes ago, and I'm not sure which scripture goes where, but we're just going to go through them quickly. This is in the parable that Jesus taught. Listen to this. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. For he said, the old is better. And isn't that true? See, the new nature, when we have walked in the old nature and walked in carnality for so long, we don't desire the structure of the Holy Ghost, but there is structure in him. There is structure in the kingdom of God. We just can't do it any kind of way. I'm reminded, uh, even now, uh, a story I told on the first presentation of this, uh, Jacob, when he wanted to produce spotted cattle, he put some poles in front of the cattle where the cattle would come and drink at the watering troughs. And he uh, cut the little notches out of those poles. He notched them out where the meat on the pole was showing. So when the cattle would come there to, to drink water from the trough, when the cattle would come there to mate up, what their eyes were focused on is what they produce when they would bring forth uh, their little one. They were producing what their eyes were focused on. What are we putting before God's sheep as they come to the church services? What are their eyes focusing on? Oh my God, I want to say Selah. Pause and think about it. I want to bring up a, another scripture. Did I do this one? I don't think so. And it says, and uh, this is uh, Leviticus 10 and 10. This is so powerful. And that you may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. Think about that for a minute. He's talking in the book of Leviticus. These were the Levites. This was the priesthood. We are the spiritual priesthood. Those of us that serve God, the book of Revelation says we're priests and kings. So we take this application, this principle from old. And the Bible says... Uh, Without holiness, no man can see the Lord. So it's throughout the Bible. And it says again, and that you may put a difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. And it goes on to say to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. Now, you know, in the Old Testament, they dealt with leprosy in the natural a lot. Leprosy was a disease and they would uh, come spotted with the disease, the sores that would come up on them. They would lose fingers and noses and toes, the spirit of leprosy, uh, I mean, the disease of leprosy in the Old Testament. But when we think about spiritual leprosy in the New Testament, spotted. People in the pulpit, loving God, preaching the word, but secret of Affairs on the side. People in the full pulpit loving God, but bound up on alcohol and drugs on the side. People in the pulpit preaching, singing, praise and worship, serving in different places in the church, bound up in all type of debauchery in secret. It causes there to be a spiritual leprosy. And the Bible says, can a leper change his spots? I'm going to leave that one alone for now. I could go on that one a while. Then we're going to go to Ezekiel 44 and it says, and they shall shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane 
and calls them to discern between the clean and the unclean. I tell you, it's time for the servants of God to stand and cry aloud concerning the righteousness of the Lord being established in the house of God. That we stop trying to imitate again what Hollywood is saying and just be concerned about numbers. And we begin to produce sheep that are pleasing to the Lord, that are dealing with the spots and the residue of the past and align the power of the blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost to wash the residue and remove it and be changed into a new creature. That's what's pleasing to God. But so many times we dishonor him. Again, the grieving of the Holy Ghost. So many times we dishonor him because we're not shining the light on him. We're shining the light in a way Way to fulfill personal desires. Oh my God. I was sent a video last night of uh, Pastor David Wilkerson. Somebody had done a compilation from several of his sermons. And the, anybody that knows Pastor Dave, he had a heart for God and for holiness and for righteousness. And that uh, the spirit of the Lord would invade the hearts of man. And I'm telling you, when I even got through listening to that, I was so broken. Just so broken. I thought, Lord, so many are so far away from that. So far away because we're trying to have church our style. All but it's time to seek the old path, as Jeremiah said, and go back to the way that, that God has established. Glory to God. God is a good God. I did this earlier, this teaching. I think I shared a little more, but don't you know all type of uh, background noise got involved. It was due to a setting that, that I hadn't fixed, but it's okay. The devil is a liar because I said, you know what? I'll just go back up and do it again. Again, the scripture we started off with, let me put this picture before you so you can have this picture in mind concerning the wine skin. We are his wine skin. Have we allowed the spirit of the Lord to go in and wash out the residue? Have we allowed him to come in and hitting and secret things that we are involved in? Have we allowed the spirit of the Lord to remove that? God will remove it if we ask him to remove it. And then ask him to fill us up with the new wine. And, and, and don't make the mistake. So many are doing that just because they have a gift. They run to the pastor. I got a gift I can sing. No, get on your knees first before God. Ask God to cleanse you. See, I'm reminded of Nadab and Abihu. You remember them? They were Moses' nephews. And they were also Aaron's sons. And they were serving in the house of the Lord. And it was time for, I'm going to use the word church to start. Hmm. Now this really preaches for today. It was time for the church services store and they knew they were supposed to light the altar with holy fire from the brazen altar but they went out and got common fire in their censers came into the house of the Lord to light the altar with common fire and everybody knows what happened that has read that passage in the Old Testament they both fell dead God doesn't play you remember in the New Testament with Peter? You remember Ananias and Sapphira lying right there in the church? And I love what Peter said. He didn't say, you lied to me, the great apostle. He said, you lied to the Holy Ghost. People forget there's a Holy Ghost that's here. Amen. He hears everything and he sees everything. And he is grieved with some of what he's seeing. Go on in the house of the Lord. The house that Jesus paid for with his blood. Oh, glory to God. May the intercessors that hear me tonight begin to take up a wailing for the house of God and the bride of Christ. It's time for a cleansing. I'm believing God to cleanse and he will because the Bible teaches us that he will. Jesus is coming back for a bride. What does the scripture say? Without spot and without wrinkle. It's time we search these old wine skin. Ask the Holy Ghost to cleanse. Father, I thank you for the teaching of the word again. I thank you, Lord God, for the scripture that you downloaded on me this morning about the new wine cannot be poured into old wine skin. It will cause a burst. It will cause there to be disagreement. 
Oh my God, it will cause havoc to be reaped. And the Bible says they both will perish. Oh, Father God, may we, your sheep, begin to seek your face like never before. May we get in our places of prayer and seek you and ask you to cleanse us and renew us where we may come forth, Lord God, with fresh oil and new wine in the Holy Ghost that'll make a difference. In the name of Jesus, I decree these things. God bless you. Anyone that may be on uh, at, at this time, some of you again were on earlier. God bless you. And I just want to say Beulah land, it means the land that we're married to. We are citizens in heaven and soon we'll see him. We want to hear well done good and faithful servant. Let the things of this world go. We're going to end with that song, Beulah Land. Until next time, God bless you. And I hold on to things to go. Thank you, Lord. I hope they want everything. And this and this kind of homesick for a country to win.